How do we put your script when we first get um, it? Well, I, you know what I do? I, uh, I get a pencil and I read it once and I always have a pencil with me because any idea that comes to my head immediately, I write it down beside it. I do the same thing. And, and I find that 90% of the time when I then go back to break it down to shot list, and I come up with an idea, I'll look at that pencil marking, mm. and it's the same. Well, because you only have those instincts the first the time. The first time, So exactly. I write everything down, probably yeah. because I, my memory is like, <laughs> um, I do that, and then I try, I read it like three or four times to, mm -hmm. to know what the subtext is. What mm -hmm. is the story really about? Because I can't even begin to start figuring mm -hmm. out how I'm gonna shoot it till I really know what story I'm telling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do that same thing with the pen or a pencil, and then I'm always conflicted because I think, I should really just give this a read mm -hmm. before yeah. doing anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the yeah. way like you write a script and you're mm -hmm. kind of stuck on the first 20 pages and you keep going over it and then you're like, well, I didn't end to the rest of it. Like, what does it feel like just to do a sweep through it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And can I sweep through it? You know, am I going to get to page 20 and be like bored, be done with it and not, you know, interested in it. Well, you know, I think, um, and I, I know what you're saying, I find that I have to have the pencil because exactly what you just said really good writing inspires you visually and I want that that instant visual reaction mm. you know and I want to remember that because because you know like you said two or three times you, you might you might forget that that initial that instinct mm -hmm. yeah but I do try to read it in its entirety but I'm not breaking it down no, or anything no, like no, that no, it's no, just no. that yeah. that gut reaction. I mean reaction. I never am able to do yeah, that. Yeah I do I'm the same thing. Like, oh I'm going to do it that way and then I'm like wait. Then you run and get a pen. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's that's what's exciting about what we yeah. do, yeah. being storytellers, is yeah. these yeah. ideas, you know, especially if the material's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, if the material's not good, I have no ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's almost like... And then you hopefully don't have to do yes. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I've found, like, in some ways, like, directing is almost like creating the tools that allow you to grab all of the ideas mm. as they're coming. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, right. like, when I was first directing, I would be on the set and I would have those, they're, they're almost like little birds, mm -hmm. and my first instinct would be, like, make those thoughts go away because I'm trying to watch the and like no these are the ways you want to adjust the scene yeah. so then I started making sure I had a pad and yeah. pen in front of me while I'm watching the monitor and just ignore you know seeing them and writing them down um, so that I could you know I don't know there was something Retrieve that them. I was I didn't think I should be writing I should thought that I should be, be feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. right. but I have to do both at the same time yeah. I have to be feeling but I also have to be able to grab all those little That's the things the yeah. 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 they're your instincts yeah. they're your impulses yeah. but which are gifts which yes, are huge gifts yes. to and you have, have to realize that. Yeah. speaking to you I'm, I'm first of all I'm so relieved that all you carry pencils because I've been <laughs> feeling like Bob Dole I mean I can't I always have to have a pencil in my hand even even when I'm directing there's there always has to be that that feeling but um, I always do my, my notes on post-its because, mm. <laughs> because I feel like even though, yes, multicolored post-its mm. because if script changes come yeah. in, I could just take, ooh, that idea, I was just, oh. that still works. I do that too. I do that yes. too. I try to do that. <laughs> oh my God. Don't yeah. write your shot list in your script. <laughs> no, don't write your shot list in your script. Because then you get blue pages and you're like, right, your shot list is gone. Yeah, exactly. But I just to circle back to that, I worked with somebody who used to say to me, no, 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 go back to that because first thought, best thought. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's some Asian mm -hmm. thing. But, yeah. Um, Agent or Asian? Asian. No. Yeah. But it stuck with me, that thing yeah, of like, true. you know, we want yes, to censor yeah. ourselves and like get yes, rid of that or yeah. whatever, but that in, impulsive instinct yeah. Is, yeah. is kind of the purest. There's a lot of velocity there. Yeah. There's a lot of power there. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, don't change, don't ever go back and change your answer on the SAT mm -hmm. or the ACT. Right. You know, you or stick with your first You know, then the, the mediator, like the critic comes yes. in and right. you're like, well, that's not what I'm supposed to be yes. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. doing. I yeah. think if you can keep those channels open to your instincts, mm -hmm. they will save you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will keep you going the right direction. Yeah. I think when those when those channels become um, all clogged up because you're behind schedule yeah. or right. you know, it started to rain or whatever, the million prog problems that we all have to deal with yeah. as being problem solvers, yeah. you know, you can put those instincts aside. And yeah. I think the more or that you the can- Or the actor, you know, or, the, or a producer or somebody comes in and is arguing with you, you know, yeah. to for expedience sake mm -hmm. on some right, other right. tip and you're <laughs> like <laughs> rethinking, well, wait a minute, maybe I yeah. don't need you, to. Yeah, you have to listen to that little voice in your head. Mm -hmm. I find that too when you do a take and you know all the all that pressure of you know we've got to go we're losing the light and you know you don't quite oh. have it and if I don't do it again the number of times I've sat in the editing room and I've gone yeah, I why? remember no, that totally. moment mm -hmm. why right. didn't I knew it right, right. then and there mm -hmm. so I try to yeah, every time I try to remember to listen to that little voice Absolutely. You know, yeah. that yes. I always have a theory like if 
you know, if you, you're under pressure and they're like, we're not going to make your, you're not going to make your day, you're not going to make, mm -hmm. you know what? In a month from now, when you're looking at the episode, yeah. and the episode is great, no one's going to remember exactly. whether or not. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't fix day. it in that's the moment, that's you yeah. will hate yourself mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you knew, you heard it. And I think if you tell those instincts yeah. to shut up, they will. Yeah. And yeah. they won't mm -hmm. talk to you anymore. Mm -hmm. right. And the yeah. little voice, you know, also, it, it's so important, not just when you're on the set, but I find that sometimes when I'm writing or when I'm looking at a script for the first time and I'll see a scene or a half of a scene and go, this can go, but I'll leave it for now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It always can go. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. even no, from the first time you see it, that yeah. it's going to get cut. Yeah. If you think it might get cut, it's going to get cut. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing mm -hmm. that you can't get rid of is what you know you can't get rid of. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you maybe even can get rid of it, you should. It probably yes. should yeah. go. Yeah. Even if, it if it's your it's favorite scene. Smart. Yes, yeah. if it doesn't Sometimes go it in the script, it, it, and if, if it doesn't go on the set, it's going to go in the edit. Yeah. You, I, and the other thing that always fascinates me, and I'm curious to hear what everyone thinks, is this balance between, I'm a planner, Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I like to know I've thought through everything, but then I totally want to be open mm -hmm. to the moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I hope that the actors come in with something I could have never thought yes. of alone mm -hmm. in a room or on a sound stage or out right. on a location by myself. Yeah. And that is what, especially as I've been doing this now a while, that's the most exciting thing yeah. or mm -hmm. those yeah. incredible surprises. That's the magic. Surprises, yeah. You yeah. Know. yeah. That's but everything. I think you can yeah. only be receptive to those if they're, you know, the idea that they're going to work or not, if you're really clear what what story what's there yes. what the story Absolutely. is what you have what you need and, the, you and there comes the planning i mean i i always come in with a shot list and then i'm prepared to throw my shot list out yes. Yes. because if i yeah. if i know you know what's the arc of the scene whose point of view i want to be yeah. in how right. i'm getting in how i'm getting out whatever happens you know whatever evolves mm -hmm. you're ready for it yeah hopefully it's like it's a structure <laughs> right? also yeah. and if nothing you. happens yeah or if you know it's then you know you have a plan that yeah. works yes. that that works for what story you're telling yes yeah. Yeah, the worst thing, I, I don't know if you've ever been, this might be revealing too much about myself, but mm -hmm. where you haven't planned well and everybody's looking at you like, yeah. so where are we going? What are we doing? And, you know, that's a recipe for yeah. freezing or and somebody, really yeah. oh. shooting yourself in the yeah. foot. Yeah. Or somebody hands you pages that morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you haven't yeah, had yeah. a script. I haven't so, had that in a while, but I've <laughs> definitely been handed eight pages in the morning. <laughs> I probably know. And, yeah. and you're yeah. like, oh, okay. The only thing I want to know, has this couple slept together? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, right, they right. have. And then you find out when you get the pages, no, they haven't. It's like, oh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. an interesting one. Mm -hmm. But there, I, uh, there's something kind of exhilarating there about is a, There is. And also you're, you're off the yeah. hook. You're, you're like, hey. The hook. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You're, but you're definitely when a plan doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. I think you have to sit and take that second to be sure you've, you can think of the next one. Yeah. yeah. Right. I yeah. remember I, I was working on, when I was working on Afternoon Delight, it was my first feature. And I was super, I love uber. that movie oh, so thank much. Thank you. <laughs> the only feature. You're so sweet. Um, and I uber prepared everything. I had yes. every scene ready. And I was doing a scene with Josh and Catherine. And we, it was in a garage. It was this big, important scene. And it wasn't working. I don't know why. I kept like saying to the cinematographer, like, why did they paint this wall blue? It looks like General <laughs> yeah. Hospital. This fucking blue is General Hospital. What That's happened? That's the problem with the scene. I was blaming the color <laughs> blue. And the actor, like, we went for a walk. And he was like, what's going on here? What's do you have any? Do you have any anything to help me with? And I was like, No, I got nothing. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong. Like, that's also that was that's also a thing to be able to admit. Like, oh, yeah. when yeah. you actually yeah. have no idea why it's not working, um, and not all, all. I mean, you know, I'm generally hustling and spinning plates yeah. and pretending and faking it. But like every so often, you have to go. I don't know. Something's not working. How did you? Un it. You know, it's yes, interesting. We actually had to go back and reshoot. It turned out. Like it, was it like did, did you have to do you have to rewrite the scene? Yeah, the yeah. scene wasn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. at the time, I just thought we'll fix it. Right. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, we ended up rewriting. It was one of the things that wasn't working. There was a rewrite that happened, and you know, yes, and and, and, it, went and back. it worked. And it worked, and it worked in worked. the end. So, yeah. You right. know, I, with the I, color, I mean, with I think the same blue. Figuring blur. out. On a, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't yeah. the blue's right. fault. It was a little bit of the blue's the fault, but not really the blue. <laughs> but I think that's a, a, an amazing part of the process. Yeah. To be able here, we're surrounded by a group of the most amazing professionals. Mm -hmm. You have all these incredible collaborators with you. It's yes. a team sport. We're not poets. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. not doing it alone. So to be able to say to your amazing actor, yeah. well, well, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. both you know, of us be like. You know, and <laughs> but I think it's hard. You wrote it, right? I did, yeah. I, think I couldn't blame the writer. The writer and <laughs> director, you know, you, yeah. you're standing yeah. there. The clock is ticking. You know, everybody's yeah. waiting. And yeah. you're like, 
like, I don't know. There's something wrong with But sometimes here. <laughs> you don't know until you get it on its feet. Yeah, that's right? true. And, and, yeah. and even, even as the writer, you yeah. know, you've got to see it, and it's like, oh, oh yeah. okay. And, some, yeah. and sometimes if you are struggling, like in prep, like, you know, if there's like a, a block, something that you can't block the scene or, or you're not sure why that scene is there or something. And I've been in these situations before. It's like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm, there's just something wrong. I can't block it. I can't picture it. And it ultimately turns out that it is the page. There is yeah, something wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Find it, it, it's kind of. It's kind of a domino effect, yeah. you know. You mean and the if page, the like what the dialogue is, right. or where yes. it fits in in a narrative way, like all, what the scene that, is yeah. about relative to the, the all big story. Yeah. yeah, like why is this yeah. scene here, and why can't I? I why am I having a hard time choreographing it? And what? So ultimately, yeah. Yeah. A, a well written scene yes. belongs there, and Absolutely. it's also yeah. and, you, and it yeah. tells you what it needs to exactly. be in yes. some way. And and when it, it has its own want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, sometimes an actor can't pull it off. You know, I had a some actors when I did um, The Kids Are Alright and they were, you know, s s s not, in, no, they were all important. Mm -hmm. They didn't have big roles and they didn't have a lot of experience right. and there was a couple scenes where I was like, what? This should be working. It works. I love the dialogue. It works mm -hmm. on the page. It's important. I know why this is here. And then I had to walk off and, and kind of rewrite it and I thought less is more for this mm -hmm. actor. They can't, mm -hmm. Yes. they don't have it to pull that's that off. But that's, that's a smart. really sophisticated, yeah. Yeah thing to, to pull off and this person just doesn't have the experience to do it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean yeah. that's about showing up and having being all present. your preparation. Yeah, yeah, but then being in your body to go this isn't What's working. actually yeah. happening? And yeah. to address, yeah. and to yeah. address the yeah. problem. I love that movie too. Yeah, yeah. such a great movie. movie. So such awesome. a great movie. We're fans of each other. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so cool. I'm curious how you guys all became directors. Well, I'm always interested because everyone's path is so completely different. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what's yours? Um, I, I was actually a producer for a long time. I, I started as a production assistant and worked my way through locations and ADing and production managing. And I was on the line producing side, but I always mm. wanted to be a director. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was always taking director classes and hiring myself to direct second units and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I studied I acting for three years because I wanted to understand yes, what actors go great. through, mm -hmm. all that kind of fun stuff. And I was on the X-Files and... Um, uh, my grandmother died, and uh, my mom found a letter I'd written to her. And in this letter, I said, "Oh, I just saw this movie, and I hope someday I can direct a movie as well as that." Mm -hmm. And I didn't put the name of the movie, but I dated it, and I was 13 years old. Oh, oh, I and love so that. I went to the producers oh, of wow. the X Files, so and I great. said, "I want to. Uh, can I direct?" And yeah. they said, "Yes." Mm -hmm. And the first thing I directed was written by a man named Vince Gilligan. Yay! Oh my God. So, <laughs> and look how that turned out. <laughs> so that's it was a like, great yeah, I was very, story. I was very fortunate. Yeah, so, that's fantastic. So I was a producer for a long time before mm -hmm. I became a director. What about you? Okay, it's so strange. <laughs> I was a modern dancer, and then I was a modern dance choreographer for mm. a long time. And this was back in the dark ages when the American government actually sponsored the arts. <laughs> uh, most <laughs> people strange. are drooling or in yeah. wheelchairs uh, from that time. So I was in uh, Paris and in London for about six years mm. uh, with different companies and doing modern dance. And then I got a grant to teach, choreograph, and perform throughout the Far East. So I was based in Tokyo, Japan, and would travel and you know, to Bali and mainland China and Korea. It was life changing. Wow. And what does that have to do with directing? Well, one day, I never knew, met anyone in the film business. I was very interested in Japanese film, mm. you know, Ozu and Mizuguchi and Kurosawa. And mm. I was standing on a street uh, in front of a coffee. There were two coffee shops, mm. one on the right, one on the left. I think, oh, I'll go to the one on the right. And by chance, I meet an older Japanese man. I'm in my mid-20s. He's in his 70s. Now he seems like a young man to me. Mm. Uh, but it, we started talking. And he spoke 12 languages fluently. Mm. He felt very familiar to me. He became like my Japanese father. And his mm. wife became like my Japanese mother. And uh, he had been the top foreign war correspondent in the country. He had been all over the world. And ultimately, he told me a series of stories that happened to him that all happened on Christmas Eve, even though he was Buddhist, all during different wars and about human connection. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to pass on those stories, and I knew it wasn't dance. Oh, so if wow. I hadn't have walked in that, if wow. I'd gone to the wow. coffee shop on the left, mm. I wouldn't be directing. And that's what I made my first film about. Mm. And I was told that I got in a program called the American Film Institute Directing Workshop for Women, which I was not qualified for. It was set up for women in the business who haven't directed. I didn't know anyone in the film business, but I got in. 
Um, and they told me, do not make this film if you ever want a job in Hollywood, <laughs> because it was three quarters in Japanese with flashbacks. <laughs> it had uh, narration, flashbacks. It was a period piece set in World War II, and it had oh. one Caucasian actor in it. But I didn't care. I wanted to tell those particular stories. Mm. So that's what I did. Wow. You know, that's how amazing. weird is that? And then it got nominated for an Academy Award amazing. for short film. Well, there's that. Which was a total <laughs> fluke of nature. That's but when that but again, amazing. I knew nobody in yeah. the film business. So it was like, oh. Yeah. That's awesome. That's and then awesome. I started learning. Yeah, beautiful story. <laughs> then I went to school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Wow. Well, weird, beat right? That. I, you know, it's <laughs> so funny. How do we come to this, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, God, how did I come to it? I don't know. I was in my early 20s, I was traveling. I uh, ended up in Israel, living in Jerusalem for a couple of years, mm -hmm. doing a variety of weird jobs, weird political jobs. And then um, what, I was like, what the hell am I going to do with my life now? You know, I'm approaching my mid 20s. I'm supposed to know. And <laughs> I started thinking, oh, I'll do documentary film. I don't know. I've got to be in my bonnet about that. And uh, one day I was by myself and I went to the Jerusalem Cinematheque and uh, I watched Jane Campion's movie, mm. Sweetie. Mm -hmm. And it was what, just one of those like perfect revelatory wow. moments where I was like, oh wow, I feel the director behind Ugh. the camera. Mm. This is like, I feel the woman director mm. behind the camera. Mm. You know, and yeah. it did, but it didn't feel um, womanly. It felt, it felt mm. kind of, tough it felt you know mm. really bold and strong and visionary. intense and visionary yeah. and like it was cutting edge wow. and i thought oh okay i get myself in this picture mm. so cut to i come back to the states not long after maybe six months and the first job i get by fluke was being the secretary to the director of the directing workshop for women oh, at wow. the AFI. What? Whoa, Tess what Martin. Oh, oh my, God. my God, that small is crazy. World. Just a friend of mine was leaving the job. Mm. So it all came together. And, and then there's a lot of pieces in after between. That. But then did you help organize all of those films, those short films? Um, I didn't really yeah. because I was a shitty secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up somewhere yes, else. Well, and then I ended up, you know, as an assistant editor. And then I ended up in New York in film school. But wow. Next. Well, uh, next, um, I was working in the TV business as a writer for many years and then sort of worked my way up to showrunner, worked on Six Feet Under and Grey's Anatomy and then ran United States of Terror and How to Make It America and really was always trying to get my own show on the air and was trying to, um, you know, be the EP of my vision as opposed to mm -hmm. somebody else's. And it was really that. It was like... I could never say, I made this. I could say, I wrote it and somebody else directed it. Or um, I wrote it and I really was like on board with the direction, but like I didn't cast it, I didn't edit it, and I didn't pick the songs. There was always some way that I didn't have to take responsibility for the whole thing mm. that stopped me from really feeling that I was punching above my weight and really I was unable to stand for the final product as a writer um, and needed to then be able to direct to be able to say, this is my thing. This is it. I love everything about the scene. Mm. I love the song. I love the actors. It's cut right. It's written right. You know, that sort of, it's all, I stand for all of it. Mm. I stand behind every moment of it. That's a director's job. And to me, to be able to synthesize that into a vision that would allow a network to say, okay, we will, we will make your pilot, um, came from a couple of things. One was really from watching Tiny Furniture and, and being like sort of right here on Lena Dunham's trajectory, mm -hmm. really sort of like right behind her in many moments going, I'm trying to get my pilot made at HBO. They're passing. Who is this person? How did this happen? Mm -hmm. You know, what does she know that I don't know? Watching Tiny Furniture, I sort of felt like, okay, I can do this. And then I had a, ver a very similar Jane Campion experience with Fish Tank, with Andrew Arnold, mm -hmm. where I was like, first I saw Tiny Furniture and I was like, okay, just super honest about your life. Oh my God. Just make yeah. it real. Let it be real. And then when I saw a fish tank, I felt that same sense of like, you know, it's not like balls. It's like womb. Mm -hmm. And it's in the camera. You know, mm -hmm. it's Andrew Arnold. It's like strength. You know, she's just got this power. She's my hero. And I saw a fish tank and I was like, I am ready. I get it now. Wow. I get what it means to use the camera to, to see how you, to, to show, you know, with images how you feel. 
and mm. yeah, made a feature, Afternoon Delight. Well, made a short, got into Sundance. Right. Went to Sundance and was like, I have to make a feature, you know, not even finishing my first week. I was like, I need to, I started writing my feature. That, it was like, once you get it, once you realize you that just you just have can, to go yeah. do it. Yeah, and then no, nobody can stop you. Right. And when it came time to make Tenacity. my feature, yeah, it was yeah. like, I'll be doing this in my house with my friends. Right. Or if, if you want to give me money, we can do it with more money and more famous people. Right. But I was going to do it anyway. No matter what. Yeah. I think that's what it takes, that kind yeah. of tenacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you have and to want it. And I think it does come from not only wanting what's there, but right. also knowing that what's there is yes. dissatisfied. Why that doesn't work right. for you. Yeah. Why you can't stay there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that pushes you. That's propulsive. Yeah. I mean, because just what you said, you're going to do it no matter what. Yeah. Whether it was with an iPhone. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. you know, on a different which, scale. Which yeah. you can do now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then it won Sundance. That's true, Leslie. <laughs> 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 and why not? <laughs> you know? And you? Yeah. Okay. So uh, my story, I, I guess mo- most, mostly similar, similar to Michelle's. Um, you know, I think growing up in the Midwest, I really didn't have like a, a calling or a vision. My father was a, a butcher, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and mm. school, schooling and education wasn't very important on their list of things for me to do. They just wanted me to get married and have kids. Mm. And, but ever since I was like in high school, I was like really became a fan of like Rolling Stone magazine and Ab- Annie Leibovitz photos. Mm-hmm. And I think the photography like really took off and, and I just started taking photos all the time and had, a, had you know, the, used the dark room, stayed after, sco- after school in the dark room mm-hmm. and just playing with photos a lot and, co- and composition and stuff. And, and then went, went on to college even though they said, oh, you know, you don't really need to go to college. I said, oh, yeah, maybe I do. And <laughs> So I studied business. I thought I was going to be a CPA because that's what my brother was. I didn't really have much direction there. And, uh, and I liked numbers and stuff until I took an elective in, in film. Mm. And so then all the photography kind of came back. And, uh, and at the same time, I had gotten a part-time job at a studio as a, as a page mm. and uh, started working on these TV shows. And just one thing after another, and I kind of ended up getting a PA job after that and then I was a script supervisor for some time which was like the best education ever because mm-hmm. you're working oh, yeah. directly side by side with all these great directors some not so great <laughs> but I would be like when a director would go in and give a note to an actor I would be kind of like standing by and kind of like articulating to myself like what would I say in this situation and um, kind of doing that that kind of practice you mm. know and then an what was your break? Came. My break was on a show called Roseanne, and uh, a little um, show called Roseanne. Yeah, and um, the director at the time. This is a multi-camera show, so you have like one director for all the uh, the episodes for the season, and he had to go to do. Uh, he had to leave to do a pilot, and uh, there was a slot open, and I just walked up to her and mm. said, "You know, there's mm-hmm. a slot that's available." You know, I'd like to direct that episode, and she just said, "Well, go ahead." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and so I didn't ask anybody else; I just asked her. And then I had to go tell the producer, by the way, I'm going to be directing that episode. <laughs> They're like, "Really? Okay, great." <laughs> and after I directed that episode, um, which was written by Amy Sherman Palladino, oh, wow. her very first uh, wow. first script that she ever wrote wow. with Jennifer Heath. Um, it was an amazing episode, so I was lucky to have such a great script. Uh, after we shot that show, Roseanne whispered in my ear, she said, I want you to do all of next season. Wow. That oh my is God, so that's awesome. great. So what I was going to say, back yeah. to your story, because you asked the producers for an episode, I think it's important mm. that people know, I mean, young people, anybody that yeah. wants to direct, I mean, let, let, let them people know, know. Yeah. Yes. that's that what you, you want to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And because, you know, no one's going to guess. No. You know, yeah. 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 And also, yeah, you, you were ready. That's ready. one yeah. of the other was, things. Yeah. Yeah. We're yes. both ready. Yeah. Like yeah. when you asked, yes. it's that that moment of opportunity mm-hmm. opened right. up, but yeah. you were ready to take that step. You, you're, yeah. you're, you're ready to take the step, but I remember uh, one of the producers saying to me, who's also a director, said, um, he said, the best piece of advice I can give you is always make sure the camera's telling the story. And I said, okay. And I walked away thinking, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> 
And I really thought about it and really had to work on it. And and that it was one of the best pieces of, oh, pieces of so advice weird. I've ever right. been given. You know, yeah. to to really look at you know using that tool. And then the other thing is because I was a producer for a long time before I was directing, I had a certain relationship with actors. I didn't know what the relationship was going to be like when I started directing, and that was the most amazing, wonderful mm. thing. Oh. You know that that connection that you have with actors, and and together you're you know helping Exploring. take yeah, yeah. and and, and yeah. take take the story from the page to the screen. That mm -hmm. was I went to that acting was awesome. class immediately mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. when I first started mm -hmm. because I'd been a dancer, so you don't say anything. Mm -hmm. It's right. all inside the body, and it was Joan Darling. Oh. It was my first acting teacher. Oh my goodness. Wow. I, and you know she's at Sundance. She goes to yeah. Sundance all mm. the time to do the acting mm. workshops, and she is just incredible. Mm. It's a different way of life because you're on location. You know, we shoot, the way television is shot nowadays. You're you're shooting all over the world, yeah. I and mean, you have mm -hmm. these incredible opportunities. And I <clears throat> remember standing on a hilltop in Morocco with. 600 extras in period costume, mm. thinking somebody pinch me. Mm. I mean, oh, wow. you know, it's just it's so. Ooh, I want that. Yeah, gig. it was on yeah. Game of Thrones. The gig to pinch her. Yeah, and they somebody yeah. came and pinched me and said, "Get moving." Yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was it's, it's, it's spectacular. It's amazing. It's, it's challenging. I mean, yeah. it has Huge. it's it's incredible challenges that that come with it. I mean, physically yeah. and mentally. You oh, know, yeah. I mean, it's you're in mud up to you know oh. here. I, I I remember being on set one day and you know it was late at night and you know everybody's tired but you're working really hard and we had such heavy 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 mud and there must have been 150 crew and 100 extras and I was describing to everybody what we're gonna do and I went to take a step and I got <laughs> stuck in the mud and fell flat on my ass like completely <coughs> covered head to toe in mud. Did someone give you a hand? And, well I couldn't get up I yeah. was stuck well wow. of course you know it, it did lighten the mood. Yeah. 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 So I hope you were rolling at that time. Don't laugh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> I hope not. In Morocco I remember our crew spoke 13 languages. Yeah. Wow. Mm. It was yeah. 13 different languages. That's incredible. And yeah. I speak French, and so did my AD, but it was still, you know, I, I would go up to the Hungarian, like, video tech guy mm. and speak in French. He'd go, I'm Hungarian. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always get it wrong. <laughs> but we were in Cape Town on Homeland uh, last season for the whole time, mm. and we were there, of course, making it Pakistan. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. But we did. And it was actually an incredible experience to, it was almost like shooting a period piece. Mm -hmm. You know, they have shot Pakistan in right. Cape Town numerous times, mm -hmm. believe it or not, because it's left hand drive, you know, okay. which is oh. really important because Homeland is realistically yes. real. So we couldn't all of a sudden change the side people are driving on. Yeah. And there are certain areas and a big Muslim population there. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were able to make it work, but it was like doing a period piece. So mm. you could look here, and it's Pakistan, but if you look there, you're in Africa. Uh -huh. right. So right. it was it was really, you know, when I first got off the plane and said, I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing here? But it ended up being an amazing choice, an incredible life experience. Well, it's, it's interesting you say, you know, you get off the plane, sometimes because you aren't going to these incredibly distant locations, uh, some of the locations have been chosen before you get there. And so you arrive, and I, I arrived at a, um, a, a ruin, um, this incredible uh, castle ruin on the top of a mountain. And it w you know, we shoot a 16 by 9 frame. Right. And if you want to shoot, this ruin was long and skinny. So really what you want to do is you want to be out here. Well, out here is a cliff. Mm -hmm. oh so you know, you're having to shoot this way. So every shot is seeing off your set and of course becomes a visual effect shot. So we had to mm. get re really creative yeah. mm. how and it's not like oh can we find another ruin on a mountaintop uh -huh. right. in yeah. Croatia. Oh, yeah, there, there's it's, one three right. miles yeah, and, down Oh the road. and there probably yeah. is but yeah. but you know <laughs> so that's but I mean that's an interesting question. Yeah. Who do, when you're in a situation like that, you're on a practical location, you know, you're against time and you have other constrictions. Who do you work with? Is it like you and your DP masterminding? Are you with <coughs> producers and ADs? It's, it's really the, the cinematographer and your first AD. And and you, you know, I, I walked around it a lot and you obviously think first and foremost about the story and how, how can I tell the story with the, the you know, say they, they 
give you five visual effect shots and you right. of course you know need hundreds yeah. of shots to get these scenes done and and that's still a generous amount considering how much they cost but you've you just you know you walk around I I put myself in it I think about it, I think about the story how I want to tell this story where I want to put the camera and then where you really can put the camera mm -hmm. right. talk to your DP and say hey <coughs> is there a way we can get a rig out here or if we do this and you know to then work with your production designer if you guys give me a, 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 a stall over I there I can hide that right. that uh, you know nine two thousand 2015 uh, uh, tower down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's right. been, uh, is there a producing director on Game of Thrones? No. Because you have so many directors working simultaneously. You do, yeah. See, the, I do can, that on mm, Homeland. Right. So I oh, hope yeah, that I, I would have breaking that, yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Another director question. working. Well, as the producing director, as a exec well, because you were an executive producer on Breaking Bad, right. too, is that I want to be sure that the directors who come to direct for us, who are all amazing, have everything they need mm -hmm. to do the best possible job to make their movie. Because now we have to make it look like a movie, but mm -hmm. we only have nine days to shoot it yeah. or whatever. Right. And that's the exciting challenge Well, there's, challenge and there's, now. there's amazing producers yes, on, you have, on uh, uh, Game of Thrones. That everyone's incredible. Unbelievable producers. Yeah. And there is always, it's film. We're storytelling. Yes. There's always a way to make there's it work. There's always a way. There's always a way we exciting. can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, my question was yeah. for that. Have you ever, in a television situation, been in an environment where you're like, this simply can't work? It was pre scouted. I'm told this is where it is. This sucks. I just need another location. Mm. I don't know if, they, if there's that kind so of flexibility in television. I have had the flexibility because I think that's really important. If it really doesn't work, like I wouldn't want to force a director to shoot a location right. that doesn't work. I'd mm -hmm. say, you know, well then let's find something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's like, you know, been established and you have no choice. But when I was when I was shooting yeah. episode eight of Transparent. Um, which was like this kind of little diversion from the rest of the season. It was sort of my homage to, and to Andrew Arnold and to Fish Tank, where the, um, the sort of 13-year-old Allie goes on this adventure with a guy she meets at the beach. It wasn't working. The morning we got there, mm. there was a place we were supposed to, they, we were supposed to sort of see the next morning, uh, you know, that she had slept overnight with him. And the, it, there was something about the location that felt like it wouldn't feel um, like the next morning. It just felt like it would still be this the same episode from before and so I talked to the location manager and sort of described something to him that I wanted to find a big open field where there were migrant workers but only just thought of it that that morning right. when I got there and I think because of the flexibility of what we're able to do on Transparent, he went and he drove around that That's morning, so awesome. and then we That's went great. there and shot yeah. at the end and of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so be it's like one of my favorite shots yeah. in I the love thing. That. I know that but we shot. only thought of yeah. it that morning. Yeah, wow. and you know, um, but that's great that you just knew viscerally. Yeah, it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to feel like the right. end gonna to be, be in the same place. Problem. Yeah. I needed the, the end to feel like yeah, like a new a new something. But it was so cool that he found it. That is cool. Very unusual. Yes, because you normally you have to get a permit. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. And they'll just tell you till. Kingdom yeah. come, like, yeah. no, you yeah. can't do it, you right. can't do it. And you have right. to it say, was we very to scrappy it. on Transparent, where yeah. we had the money, but we also had the feeling that we were kind of indie. in that indie film right. thing, right. which, so is, which where, is great. Yeah, yeah, where I could run off yeah. with a DP and go in a cave. So and did, I was just yeah. thinking in Morocco, <laughs> we were shooting during uh, a religious holiday, mm. oh. the one where they kill all the sheep. Yes, oh, no. I was, I, I've been there uh, that day. And, and <laughs> the imam would decide how long the holiday was, so we didn't know how long the holiday would be so we was hope we were hoping it was a day so we didn't have to shut down but it turned out it was three days mm. yeah so but it, you are at the the mercy of the mercy yeah. of the imam.